Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union. A meeting of the Union's Executive Council has just finished and we're joined by National Officer Ricardo Latore to once again discuss the BA safety campaign. Now this is a proposal that's been put forward previously, led I have to say by the National Fire Chiefs Council where, almost unbelievably, firefighters are asked to don breathing apparatus but not don the mask above the bridgehead. Now Ricardo, you've been leading on this campaign. It came up initially in London Fire Brigade. You took it on. Can you give us the background to it? Absolutely. And I'll start by saying you're correct there to mention the National Fire Chiefs Council and their guidance, because that is what underpins this unsafe practice wherever it's rising up in individual fire and rescue services. And I think you know, one of the most reckless things we're still facing right now is the NFCC's refusal to remove that reckless yeah. guidance. Even following successful challenges, as you mentioned, in London Fire Brigade, an independently chaired health and safety panel, where the union argued it was unsafe, it was unprofessional, um, it was unlawful, and thankfully that independent chair, who is an ex-senior HSE inspector with expertise in the fire and rescue service, ruled that not to be best practice, agreed with the FBU's challenge, and I'm pleased to say that London Fire Brigade took the sensible and professional approach of then removing that practice from their policy. But because this NFCC guidance still exists, they're refusing to remove it. We have seen it raise its head elsewhere. But I'm, I am pleased to report we've seen union successes in challenging that. We've um, halted it in brigades like Humberside, West Midlands, Cambridgeshire, due to the intervention of FBU officials locally. Um, I'm pleased to report we brought common sense to bear in Manchester recently. You know, one of the other biggest high-rise risk profiles we have in the fire and rescue service. We did have to take legal action, we did start a application for judicial review. I'm pleased to say we've been able to withdraw that because Manchester Fire and Rescue Service communicated to our officials locally that they will be removing the practice from all their operational policy and I'm pleased to say they've now done that. We've withdrawn that application for JR in Greater Manchester and our officials are now in conversations with management about how we can develop you know, an acceptable and safe high-rise firefighting policy. But that, isn't that the point Ricardo? I mean we've, we've fought this off, we've defeated it, we got an independent senior health and safety expert to confirm this practice is unsafe, it's unlawful and it is operationally flawed. So why is it coming back and indeed where is it coming back across the UK fire service? Some chief fire officers are still persisting with trying to remove this BA safety from their firefighters. Emboldened by the fact that that NFCC guidance that permits it still exists. So even though we've seen it withdrawn in huge high-rise risk profiles such as London Fire Brigade and Greater Manchester, um, we've got a small number of chiefs who still insist on trying to take the BA off of our firefighters in arguably one of the most dangerous scenarios they can enter into. So we have started legal proceedings in Hants and Isle of Wight. Right. Um, we started legal proceedings in Dorset and Wiltshire and we're challenging it in a number of other brigades across the eastern region, West Yorkshire for example, where they just started to try and impose this unsafe policy. But we're clear, our members are in clear throughout this. Breathing apparatus keeps firefighters alive. It has protected us for decades. It wasn't pulled out of the air, it was born from the death and the injury of firefighters. We will not let the health and the safety of firefighters or the public be used to paper over the cracks of a building crisis caused by the failings of government by this reckless and unsafe NFCC guidance that some chief fire officers are insisting on running with. We, we will fight it wherever this comes up. So. Ricardo, thanks very much. We're now also joined by FBU General Secretary Matt Rack. Now, Matt, Ricardo has just highlighted the fight that's ongoing. I mean, as the leader of the union, this is beggar's belief what's happening across the fire service. But what's your message to, first of all, these chief fire officers that are persist in bringing this unsafe practice? And secondly, I would argue far more importantly, to FBU members who are happy to suffer? I think for chief fire officers, I would say you are wrong, you're incorrect, and you need to withdraw this immediately. Uh, otherwise, you will have a battle on with the fire brigade union. Uh, the safety procedures that we have in relation to breathing apparatus have all been introduced as a result of previous tragedies, either deaths 
or serious injury of firefighters or members of the public. And they seem to be forgetting all the lessons of our profession over uh, the past 50 or 60 years. And when actually things do go wrong, we will see the same, very same people running away, running a mile and sloping their shoulders and saying it was nothing to do with me and that's not going to be unacceptable. That's not going to be acceptable. So we will challenge them legally and in any other way we see fit. And to firefighters, I would say this, actually, we think we've got a very strong legal case. We've got great legal representation and we will see these people in court now as a result of their refusal to talk to us seriously. Uh, however, we can't rely on the courts and it comes down to this. I don't think any employer can force, instruct or order a worker, in this case a firefighter, to undertake a dangerous practice. And what they're trying to introduce is a dangerous practice and frankly we need to simply ignore them. And firefighters need to take their own professional judgment using the best practice that's been established for decades and say I will be putting on my personal protective equipment at the time that I see fit and that's at the BA entry control point. And it's as simple as that. That's what we should be doing on the ground. Okay, Matt. Now, just finally, you've described this as, or the motivations behind this policy, as making firefighters pay for the building safety crisis. Mm -hmm. Do you stand by that? Absolutely. The, the, the reason this whole debate has arisen is because we've got thousands of unsafe buildings in the UK. And instead of trying to put the buildings right and make them safe and make them compliant with the legislation, what the employers are saying in these cases is, we can't solve that. What we want to do, therefore, is cut your safety procedures. That's completely unacceptable. It's also a cowardly avoidance of the real issue, which is the failure of the government and its legislation to protect people in their homes. Matt, thanks very much indeed. Well, look, for more information on this vital issue, you can follow us on our website. That's www.fbu.org.uk. Or for more immediate updates on this and indeed the wider work of the union, you can follow us on Twitter. That's simply at FBU National. Till next time, thanks for joining us and Matt, thanks very much. Thanks, Sam. Thanks all.